Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, 56th annual convention of the European cable industry. We entered 2010 as one of the world's strongest performing businesses in communications. Uh, witness the annual results we publish today as an industry. Uh, we're delivering consistent growth through all new services in 2009. Our member companies have yet again proved to stay the course in tough economic times. It shows that constant product innovation and service delivery are convincing our 73 million customers in Europe day in and day out. The momentum is in our favor, as our products and services have become basic necessities to the modern household. An ever-increasing number of customers are now choosing to have multiple services, which means we can also report that we are now very fast approaching the 100 million service subscribers in cable. In terms of customer reach, popular appeal and innovative technology, the cable industry, certainly also here in Europe, has confounded its critics. An industry which once regarded as an unfulfilled promise is now actually delivering the goods. Not so long ago, questions were asked whether Europeans would actually be willing to pay for television. Questions were asked if the huge reservoir of analog cable viewership in Europe would ever go digital. And questions were asked if all the intense capital expenditure by European cable companies was actually worth the investment. And we are now showing a consistent drive to higher average revenues per user for television, interactive, video on demand. We're showing a decisive move towards digital transition. And we're showing that our capital expenditures allow us to bring speeds to customer homes and DSL operators cannot patch. They need to start serious new investments themselves to keep up. And that's exactly the kind of infrastructure competition that will be the engine of Europe's forthcoming digital agenda. Broadband network providers will be forced to engage in an investment cycle reacting to the competition, which is us. The same will be true for mobile broadband players, who had the advantage of mobility and ubiquity, but will certainly meet their challenges when customers are actually going to use all that bandwidth. We are today witnessing the first mobile congestion in the US and in Europe. And who knows what happens to the mobile networks when you all are really want to use your new Apple iPads to watch HD movies on the road. That's why I am fairly confident that cable's raw and massive bandwidth power will be good in competition, not just with broadband, wireline, but also with the mobile business. And all this competition is actually starting to get noticed. Last month, we counted the fourth chief executive of an incumbent telco in succession, claiming that cable should be more regulated, that it would be unfair that incumbents are regulated to provide access and cable is not. And to those critics, I would say, you're a bit early. Let's talk again when we have true national scale, when we're 10 times bigger in revenue and OCF to match yours, have your market shares and no longer fragmented in hundreds of smaller entities. Fragmentation for cable remains a problem which we will keep pressing in our discussions with regulators and competition authorities. Cab cable companies do not compete with each other. We compete with other distribution platforms and telecom operators, some of whom have enjoyed decades of government support. And in cable, customers generally win when cable companies merge. If we're to be truly successful competitors, we need scale. Scale to advertise, scale to deploy technology, scale to attract financing. And in a number of countries, this consolidation has been completed, but half of Europe still looks like a patchwork of dozens, hundreds, and sometimes even thousands of smaller operators. To me, it's not a question if those will consolidate, it's only when. It's really only a matter of time. Clearly, the consolidation process has seen a pause of several years because of a lack of liquidity in the capital markets and a diverging valuation expectations between buyers and sellers. But there are clear signs now that this period of inactivity is over. A new phase has started where cable companies can build on long-term strategies, establishing themselves firmly in the communications industrial landscape. The IT communications industry in general has a crucial role to play in Europe's economic regeneration. Responsible for 40% of Europe's GDP, 
Collectively, broadband-based innovation has the potential to create up to 1 million jobs and 850 billion euros worth of economic activity by 2015. Our industry, Cable, made this statement recently in, in a joint recommendations to the Spanish presidency, and we aim to continue our support to the new European digital agenda in this respect. Among others, we are actively supporting it in a run-up to the World Congress on Information Technology, which is taking place next May in Amsterdam. Going back to the results published today, um, in cooperation, I should say, with Screen Digest, there are a few I would like to mention in sp specifically. Firstly, overall service subscriber numbers for the industry showed a healthy increase by 4.2 million. Clearly, in this digital transition, there is a reduction in the number of analog co connections. That is a, 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 a byproduct of the transition. But the new services more than compensate for that, and the number of services per household keeps going up. The total revenues for the industry grew by 3% on top line, which is good considering the circumstances of a full-blown economic crisis in 2009. And also, if you count that a number of the European cable countries, particularly in Central Europe, still operate outside the euro and saw big swings in their exchange rates. Across all new service areas, we're seeing double-digit growth for broadband. Internet to 22 million connections, digital television to 22 million, and digital telephony to 16 million. And much of that growth was driven out of Germany. German cable has shown another great year with 45 to 50 percent subscriber increases for broadband internet and for telephony. It's very, very encouraging to see how cable in this country, this significant country, is starting to shape its own destiny again. I recently spent quite a bit of time with political leaders and other stakeholders in Germany, and many of them are enthusiastic about the rebirth of the cable industry, even if it's running a few years behind the rest of Europe. And the potential for the rest of Europe is enormous. Once Germany fully embraces the technology and innovation of high-speed broadband and intelligent television. One of 2009 big success stories is the DOCSIS 3 technology, which allowed us to make next generation broadband at fiber speed, now commercially available in over 15 countries. And a number that's still growing. Professional speeds at residential prices for living rooms throughout Europe. With the 100 megabit plus speeds, we're, we're setting new benchmarks and create an awareness among customers that real broadband speeds only start between 40, 20 and 40 megabits. And in turn, the products of 60 and 120 megabits are proving to be very popular and are creating a new type of consumer demands, a new type of applications. In fact, with these super high speeds, we're, we have really redefined the battlefield with our competitors and are forcing the entire industry to follow. We could not be more supportive to the policymakers of Europe in their vision of the forthcoming digital agenda. Finally, the digital transition has entered into a new and decisive phase, showing a strong 20% increase in digital cable TV revenues, 20% increase in digital cable TV subscribers, and a 20% increase in video on demand revenues. For the first time ever, digital TV cable revenues outpaced analog TV cable revenues which marks a new and significant milestone for European cable. This not only means that the analog to digital transition is now in full swing, but also that many households now find their way to interactive services enabled by digital. This digital television revolution will eventually produce nothing less than an entire new ecosystem for Europe's audiovisual industry. It will allow content owners to seduce customers back again who were tempted to think that interactivity only existed on the internet. The convenience and product superiority of high definition, DVR and VOD, will be crucial to keep our customers and hence also to the customers of broadcasters, the broadcasting community, and to keep them loyal to television. 